All right, welcome back everybody. My name's Austin. Today I wanna to update you on Polkadot, on XRP, on Cardano. So check the timestamps down below in the description. But first, let's talk about Bitcoin and have a very real conversation on where the market is right now. Bitcoin's on-chain structure saying to bulls, thou shall not pass. Now without a reset. A reset meaning either many weeks of sideways or a decent bearish dip. So as a crypto investor, let this be a warning. In the short term, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't know what the price of Bitcoin is going to do tomorrow, and neither do you. But if the on-chain data is saying that we need some relief, we need a little reset before we cross 20k, I'm going to share that with you. So a reset means many weeks of sideways action or a decent bearish dip. Will we get a dip? As of now, there's no impulse of coin movements that is strongly bearish just yet. It's a waiting game. So consolidation looks like it's in order. And in any bull market, consolidations happen. Like here, like here, like here, like here, like here, right now. But if Bitcoin truly is going to be over $100,000 per BTC someday, who's selling? Seriously, who's selling? Well, this channel will always go the extra step for you and find the most relevant information that pertains to you, a Bitcoin holder. On-chain metrics show that older Bitcoin are being sold right now as Bitcoin's price increases. This indicates that long-term hodlers are realizing some profits. Okay, interesting. And you may be saying, Austin, isn't this sort of a bearish indicator? Should I realize my profits and get out? Well, according to on-chain market analyst Glassnode, while this may seem alarming, this trend has historically been extremely bullish. So while a dip may be in order, it happens. It happens in bull markets. And in fact, digging into the data, long-term hodler selling, is this bearish? In short, no. In fact, we've outlined before previous analysis that long-term hodlers have historically realized profit before and during bull runs. And just for clarity, when we say long-term hodlers, that means coins held for at least 155 days. So not that long, but this eliminates all the day traders. This eliminates all the short-term speculators. 155 days. And as a result of this trend, the total supply held by long-term hodlers usually decreases well before market tops. Look at this. This black represents Bitcoin's price history. This orange indicates the total supply held by the long-term hodlers of BTC. And as price goes up, they sell at the start or into that price run-up. So it happens. It's part of any market. Expect it. Am I buying? Am I selling? I don't know what the price of Bitcoin will do in the short term. In the long term, I am a big believer. But I buy the dips. The dips is when you buy. If you have some perspective on this, comment down below. But let's keep going. Next piece of Polkadot news. Huobi Global, major exchange, looks to become a key player in the growth of the Polkadot ecosystem. Check this out. In a pair of blog posts, the Seychelles-based exchange announced a Polkadot sponsorship program as well as a $5 million Tether stablecoin fund from the Huobi Innovation Lab to support developers, event organizers, content creators, and ambassadors throughout the Polkadot ecosystem. So they are big believers in the future of Polkadot cryptocurrency and they're putting their money where their mouth is. Now, about this Polkadot sponsorship program, the program allows individuals to recommend Polkadot projects for listing in the Polkadot Ecological Zone, which is a special section of the Huobi Exchange. So they want future Polkadot altcoins to be recommended to them so they can list on their exchange. Sponsors are also reportedly granted an invite to Huobi's annual conference, as well as other offline events. So the whole perk package will be given to you if you're a Polkadot project, they want to support you, which in turn supports Polkadot. Sponsors are required to have significant vested interest in the success of Polkadot in order to apply. 
the minimum requirements include 300,000 DOT tokens, right now about $1.5 million, of which half must be locked with Huobi as asset certificates. This is a major global exchange throwing huge support to one cryptocurrency. May mean that a lot of these DOT tokens are getting bought up, locked up, and taken off the market. We will see. I will keep you updated. Okay, next piece of news. If you're an XRP holder, you're going to want to hear this. After the radical increase in XRP volume, according to CoinMarketCap, right, the price went up, it only made sense that Jed McCaleb would increase his sales as per his deal with Ripple. Today, 9.9 .9 million XRP were sold, making it a new all-time high for Jed sales. As you know, all this can be verified publicly on the blockchain. Jed McCaleb was originally one of the founders of Ripple. Actually, it was Chris Larson and Jed McCaleb founded OpenCoin back in 2012, later renamed to Ripple Labs. He later had a falling out, left the company, and started competitor Stellar Lumens, Stellar Labs. But upon his exit, he was awarded a hefty stake of 9 billion XRP tokens back in 2014. He wanted to sell them all at once. That, of course, would have destroyed the project, really tanked the price. So there was a contract to sell in spurts. So just be aware, this is sell pressure on the price. Now, he just sold 9.9 .9 million. What is the sell pressure contractually, officially? Well, beyond the fourth year, where we are now, of the revised agreement, McCaleb is able to liquidate up to 1.5% of XRP's global trading volume per day. So as XRP's trading volume goes up, he's allowed to liquidate more. And I guess how that affects you as a potential XRP holder, at this rate, at the quickest, Jed's 3.836 billion XRP tokens will run out in 387 days. So he started with about 9 billion. He now has 3.8 billion. We'll see. I'll keep you updated. Next piece of news on Cardano. 68% of blocks are now being made by stake pool operators. Cardano is now over two thirds of the way towards complete decentralization. So progress is being made. It'll be interesting. It will be interesting to see which dApps then choose, which developers choose to build dApps on them. I wonder, are there any specific dApps you, the audience out there, are looking forward to with Cardano? Shout them out if you know them, if there are any big ones yet. Now, before we get to Steve Wozniak's new cryptocurrency, I do want to take 60 seconds to talk about the sponsor, BlockFi. Do you own Bitcoin? Do you own Litecoin or Ethereum or a vast number of stable coins like Tether, USD, etc.? Well, BlockFi offers traditional banking services for crypto investors, meaning you can put your crypto to work, earn up to 8.6% interest when you open up a BlockFi interest account. And for a limited time, if you use our link down below, you can get up to $250 of a crypto bonus with a deposit of $25 or more in crypto. Link down below, super easy to open up an account. They're super transparent in terms of their payout structure and there's no hidden fees with it. How secure is this? Well, it has backing from some of the biggest names. We've got a rock solid foundation, Coinbase Ventures, Winklevoss Capital, Morgan Creek Capital Management, which is something I look for when I'm searching for interest bearing accounts for my crypto. Again, earn up to 8.6 APY when you open a BlockFi interest account and use the link down below right now and get $250 crypto bonus with a deposit of $25 or more in crypto. But next piece of news, Apple co-founder Wozniak's new venture lists their own token to help fund energy efficiency projects. So check this out. Steve Wozniak has launched eForce, a company that facilitates investments in energy efficiency projects via cryptocurrency and blockchain tech. So their whole company is called eForce, and specifically, how do they help energy efficient projects? And why do they need a cryptocurrency? The company aims to be a marketplace to streamline the process of financing and undertaking such projects by enabling them to receive crowd contributions from investors via its token WASX which was listed Thursday on HBTC. 
And since then, more exchanges are picking the token up. It will also be listed next week on South Korea-based crypto exchange Bitthumb Global, but basically it'll be a cryptocurrency used within the marketplace. And what sort of energy efficient companies would use eForce? According to eForce, energy service companies or ESCOs tend to have limited access to capital since they often are unable to turn to traditional banking channels, as banks lack the technical expertise to properly assess the return on investments. So eForce is trying to solve this and be a sort of crowdfunding marketplace for these types of businesses. ESCOs can register energy efficient projects with eForce and it will validate the projects and evaluate their investment needs, calculate the return and create energy performance contracts. Okay, I don't understand why you would need a cryptocurrency to do this. I mean, why couldn't after they get the consultation from eForce, why couldn't then they use fiat money or Bitcoin? Why do they need to create their own coin? I don't know if you we will see. We'll see. I'm going to do more research in a direct quote from Waz. We created eForce to be the first decentralized platform that allows everyone to participate and benefit financially from worldwide energy efficient projects and create meaningful environmental change. Okay, I like that. I like the sound of that. I'll keep researching. That is the video. My name's Austin. See you tomorrow.